In this lesson, we'll take a look at Max's animation and time controls. The scene is 0 to begin. Now, if we were to look at the very bottom of Max, we'll find our trackbar. We can go ahead and start to scrub on the trackbar using the time slider to scrub forward and backward in time. Now, this is very basic. This is a great way to study our animation. So, we, what we have here is just our creature falling into this scene. We'll be using this asset for a few of the lessons throughout this course. But here, again, we have a way to just kind of focus on each frame. And then we can kind of scrub back and forth faster or slower just to gauge the timing, see if we like it or if we'd like to adjust things. So, again, this is a very basic way to move through the animation, but also a very important tool. Now, if we were to take a look at these numbers, of course, these represent our frames. And this is also known as our active time segment, the amount of frames that we're displaying here in Max. We can always adjust this. We'll take a look at one way we can do so from our time configuration panel. But if you'd like to adjust your active time segment faster, you could always work with the hotkeys Control, Alt, and the left mouse button to adjust the start of your active time segment. So notice I've just set the start to frame 8. And if we were to use the right mouse button, you can adjust the end time. All right, so now if we were to play back, we're just viewing from 8 to about 58 when we play through this. Now we're just focused on this part of the animation. Again, a great way to kind of keep focused on an area we might want to tweak. All right, great. So that's a look at how to work with the trackbar, the time slider, and our active range. We will take a look at more trackbar features. But before we do, let's go ahead and take a look at our animation controls at the bottom right of Max. So you can see that they resemble what we'd see on a remote. If we would like to play through the animation, we'd simply click on the play button. If we'd like to pause the animation, we'd click on that same button. Let's say if we want to move one frame at a time. If we would like to move forward one frame at a time, we'd simply use the button to the right of our play button. And to the left of the play button is a way to move back one frame at a time. Again, just a great way to focus on each pose. Now, let's say if you want to jump to the very start of your active time segment, well, you can go ahead and work with Go to Start. And that will bring you right to the beginning. Or if you were to click on Go to End, found to the right of our Next Frame button, That'll send you to the very end of the active time segment. Now, let's say if you want to scrub one keyframe at a time. Well, take a look next to our current time field. We have a mode that allow us to do just that. We can now scrub one keyframe at a time. To go ahead and show you this, what I'll do is head over to Layers. I'll just choose Tools and grab manage layers. And at that point, we can go ahead and show our controls and grab one of the control objects. Let's say the creature's right arm control. That's this arrow here. You could always zoom in or press the Z key to frame in and get in a little bit closer. But you'll see now with key mode on, when we start to use our previous and next buttons, now we're able to move through the animation one keyframe at a time. Again, this is a great way to focus on each pose. Beautiful. All right, so that's essentially how our animation controls work. Now, what about our time controls? We'll take a look. One option we have here is to go to a specific frame. So if we would like to get to frame 15, we most certainly can do so by simply typing that in our current time field, and that's the frame we are now viewing. But we can get to this and so many more options from our time configuration panel. Well, how can we access this? Well, we have a few ways of doing so. If we were to right click on our key mode toggle button, notice that'll send us to our time configuration dialog. If we were to right click on the time configuration button, that'll also open up this panel. 
And by left clicking on it, we can open it up as well. So notice Max give us a lot of ways to access this. Very convenient. Now, at the top left, we find a way to adjust our frame rate. So right now, we're viewing through NTSC, which is about 29.97 frames per second. But if we'd like to set this to film, take a look, we most certainly can do so. And you can see how the active time segment is now adjusted to accommodate that change. If we'd like to view 25 frames per second for TV, we could always work with PAL, or we can set our own custom frame rate, uh, s simply using custom here. So I'll go ahead and set this back to NTSC. Now, what about the frames that are displayed on our time slider? Well, we can adjust that by using the option at the top right. So take a look. The standard is frames, meaning that we can see our current time and the very end of our active time segment. But if we would like to focus on, let's say, our frames as well as seconds, we most certainly can do so by using this second choice here. And if we'd like to focus on our frames and ticks, we most certainly can do that using the third option. We would use this if we need to animate in between frames, known as subframes. So if we want to get super detailed with our animations, this is a great option. I'll go ahead and choose OK. Now as we start to scrub through, notice we're getting in between frames here. So this is very helpful, especially if we are working on slowing down our animations and we need to again add more polish we most certainly can just come in and get to frame 31 and between that frame which is really cool and start to polish the animation that way all right well i'll move back to our time configuration dialog and i'll go ahead and point out this last option here again just a way to move in between frames get to those subframes and animate to add more polish. Now, I'll go ahead and set this back to frames, and we'll go ahead and take a look at this second section here. And this is a way to adjust our playback speed. So right now, by default, we're using our real-time playback speed, and that's all set at the very top here where we find the frame rate. So right now, our real-time setting is NTSC, and that's the speed that Max will play back. If we were to go ahead and uncheck this, take a look, we could ask Max to play through the animation in reverse if we would like. If we would go ahead and choose that and hit play, that's exactly what's going to happen. This is a great way to focus on our animations, believe it or not, because a good rule of thumb is if our animations look good playing in reverse, chances are they'll look good playing forward. Going back to the time configuration panel, take a look, we also have ping pong mode. Again, another great way to study our animation. So as we play through this, take a look, once we reach the start of our active time segment, Max is going to bounce right back to the end, and vice versa, once we meet our end, that's going to bounce right back to the start. So this is, again, a, just a great way to kind of focus and pinpoint what might need to change. All right, so this is how those playback settings work. I'll go ahead and move back to real time just to show you that we can adjust the speed. If we were to go ahead and set this to, let's say, one half our real time, the animation will play back slower. Now, right now, this is just a, a playback thing we're viewing. This isn't actually a scale of our time at all. I'm going to show you a really neat feature that will allow us to scale our keys. Really cool option if we would like to either speed up our timing or slow down our timing and adjust our active range simultaneously. This is an option that we would use. So we'll take a look at that very soon. But I'll go ahead and set this back to our normal speed. And now we'll take a look at the third section here, which is a way of adjusting our active time segment. So right now this tells us that we're viewing from frame 7 to frame 60, but if we wanted to get back to the length of this entire animation, well, we set our start time to 0 and the end to frame 80. And Max will also feed back to us our frame length as well as our frame count. If we'd like to get to a current time, 
here's the field to do that. So we know that we can always do that from the bottom right hand corner of Max. But if you're in your time configuration panel and you'd like to do that from here, you most certainly can. Let's say if I wanted to focus on frame five, I'm going to go to that frame easily, which is okay. And that's exactly where we are at. All right, let me go ahead and show you that time rescaling tool because this is a really neat feature. So let's say if we wanted to kind of adjust the animation for a more emotional effect. Well, what we could do is always rescale our timing so that we slow down every key. If we would like to do so, we would simply use the rescale time tool. So if we were to go ahead and click on that, take a look, we can go ahead and set our end time to let's say frame 300. When we now choose OK, and click OK in our time configuration panel. When we play this back, take a look at what Max has done. It's actually gone through and rescaled each keyframe proportionally to the value that we have set in our time rescaling options. All right, so if I were to go ahead and select the character's arm control, just to show you this, take a look at all of our keys, how they have been spread apart. So again, a great feature. You might use this if you are cutting through your animations where you have the animation playback at a normal speed, but then on your next shot, you want a render of your animation playing back a bit slower or maybe even a bit faster, depending on what you have set your time rescale to. But you have that option of doing so very easily inside of Max. So I definitely wanted to point this out to you. I find this to be another very helpful tool. All right, so we have one more section to take a look at here. These are our key steps. So remember, we're able to jump one keyframe at a time in Max, and this is all regulated here. So by default, we can go to each keyframe, but let's say if we wanted to go to each rotate keyframe of our selected object. Well, we'd first turn off, use trackbar, then we can go ahead and turn on selected objects only, We'd want to uncheck, use current transform, and then we'd want to check on rotation. By the way, with use current transform, whatever gizmo we have active is what Max will use to know how to scrub, scrub through one key at a time. So if we wanted to, again, to just focus on rotation, we can go ahead and make sure that option is checked. And I'll now go ahead and choose OK. Let's go ahead and grab one of our control objects. I'll grab one of the finger controls and let's go ahead and take a look. Now when we have key mode toggle on and we start to move backwards in time, Max is actually going to each keyframe where there is a rotate key. Now what if we wanted to see all rotate keys or have an idea of where all the rotate keys are? Well, if we were to go back and turn off selected objects only and choose OK, now when we, let's say, use our next key or previous key buttons, we're actually going to the moments where there is a rotate key. So you can see here that around frame 135, there is actually no keyframe on this object, but somewhere in the animation, there is a rotate key there. So that's basically how that option works. All right, so in this lesson, we have learned about Max's animation controls as well as its time controls. Again, we have a lot of ways to adjust our timing so that we can work on animating according to whatever we need for our projects. And I'll go ahead and head back over to the time configuration setting just to go ahead and set this back to use trackbar. I find that to be very helpful. Again, so we could just focus on the keyframes of the active time segment according to whatever object we have selected. I'll make sure that the time display is set back to frames. I find this to be very helpful. But again, if we need to just go in and focus on more specific information, we most certainly can adjust our display from here. Everything else looks pretty good, so I'll now go ahead and choose OK. I'll leave the animation playing back at a slower speed. I think that's pretty cool. Max allows us to do that so easily.